up? My name is Jess and welcome to my channel Reads with the Ravenclaw. Today is Valentine's Day. I've just realised it might not actually be Valentine's Day by the time this video is up but as I am sitting here filming this right now it is and if you had not already guessed by my tone I'm not the biggest fan of Valentine's Day but and there is a big but here. I think it is often assumed that just because I dislike Valentine's Day I therefore dislike romance in general and representations of romance when in fact I don't at all. However I've noticed that a lot of people feel completely differently to me and actively hate on romance in books, in film, in TV shows. They feel like it cheapens it or that it's just too much of a risk because romances are never portrayed correctly and I disagree with that. Often when I read a book and it has a well-written, well-done romance in there, it will make me enjoy that book more. And that's really what I wanted to talk to you about today. I wanted to make a video um, stating my opinion in defence of romance in books and talk about a little bit about why I enjoy it. You are obviously very, very welcome to completely disagree with me on any of it and if you want to join in the discussion below, please do. My first point in defence of romance in books is a point that I've seen quite a lot when this topic has come up but I think it's really important to just reiterate it and that is that I think that a lot of the time romance can lead to really strong character development that we wouldn't have otherwise. People do change in relationships and I'm not talking about the annoying kind of change where they just ditch all of their friends and family and only ever spend time with the person they love. I can 100% see why that annoys everybody. Often characters in books and the qualities and the attitudes and the outlooks that they possess help to develop the qualities and outlooks and attitudes of other characters in the books. And this obviously isn't restricted just to romantic relationships, friendships, relationships with family members, all sorts of different relationships can have that same developmental impact. However, I generally feel that a lot of people are in agreement that solid friendships and solid family relationships are really important to see portrayed in books, but not as many seem to be so keen to jump to the defence of romantic relationships. And I think that's because there's kind of so many cliches attached to romances which I'll get onto later which just makes people really wary of them and obviously there are writers that don't use romance to actively develop their characters as I've just mentioned sometimes when a character enters into a romantic relationship you find their development taking a step back almost and they become a lot more withdrawn from the other people that they care about because they are entirely focused on that relationship but in general I think that romance is a hugely important tool to do with character development I think a really good example for this is Lizzie Bennet and Mr Darcy in Pride and Prejudice. Their relationship with each other allowed them to become more developed as characters. Darcy realised that he was being a complete arsehole, Lizzie realised that she had a tendency to jump to conclusions and through their relationship with each other they started to have a better understanding of themselves and a better understanding of themselves in relation to other people and in relation to the world. So yes, romance can lead to really excellent character development if the author does it right. If they do it wrong, of course, it's a whole other matter and I think it is so easy for authors to get romance so shockingly wrong just because there are so many cliches just ingrained in romantic subplots that it can be hard to distance yourself from them, I think, if you're exposed to them so often. But I think to write off all romance just because of these cliches that do admittedly populate the genre from time to time is just... I don't know, I think you're overlooking a lot of potentially great character development, a lot of potentially great characters in general and material just because you just like a few kids through clip few cliches. However, even when I think that people can kind of get their head around romantic subplots in novels of other genres, I think the romance genre in itself is still massively looked down on. Another thing that I really dislike, and I could make an entire video talking about, is the fact that romance fiction is often referred to as women's fiction and this just really irritates me because romance is not exclusive just to one gender any more than it is any more than it should be restricted to just one sexuality or just one race i think a lot of the time the way that things are marketed the way that romance is written just completely ignores diversity and I think that's a big problem with the genre. There are romances in books that are wonderfully diverse and the genre I believe is getting more diverse particularly if you turn to YA romance which is quite a risky thing to say because on the one hand YA books are very well known for perhaps being 
more forward thinking in terms of what they put out in terms of literature. But on the other hand, they are also held up as one of the most cliche ridden genres of them all. If you can call YA a genre. That is also another video. I'm getting so many ideas out of this discussion. Going back to my original point, turning romance woman's fiction also kind of shames it, in my opinion. Which is which is strange, and obviously I'm not saying that there is any shame in being a woman or enjoying romantic fiction. Of course there isn't. But I think that the term woman's fiction just comes across so patronisingly. It's like saying, of course, it's just those women and their sentimental waffle and oh, it just, it makes me mad. <laughs> I think that a lot of the time romantic fiction is just massively disparaged and disliked in um, in so many circles, in academic circles, in just booktube circles, I think it can be quite disliked depending on where you look. There's a lot of bookish snobbery surrounding the romance genre because I think a lot of people just assume that there's no depth to it, that there's nothing new or original to be said. But now I also think that love is one of the most original themes that there is in literature and that there are so many facets and ways that you can interpret romantic love. So to look down on romantic fiction it's just, I think you're closing yourself off to a world of potential because I think where we are now in the literary world, there is a lot of potential of ways we could go with romantic fiction. Also, just because a book is sentimental, just because a book does have cliches, does that mean that somebody has any less right to enjoy it? Me personally, and for a lot of people, books are escapism. They are your way to get out of the mundane nature or the... Um, stressful nature of your everyday life and just enjoy yourself and just exist for a few minutes. And I think that sometimes just a fun romance novel can help a lot of people with that. Example, Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. I admittedly was one of those literary snobs that looked down on that book for so long because it had French Kiss in the title, but I read it. I was so happy reading it and it was lovely because I read it during my exams a few years ago and it just felt like when I picked up that book in the evenings and I knew that the romance of Anna and Etienne would be coming to meet me, I could just smile and just relax. So I think on the one hand, yes, romantic fiction is a genre that has the opportunity to and should develop in a lot of ways. But in defense of stereotypical romantic fiction, if it offers somebody an escape, if it offers somebody enjoyment in their reading, then that is excellent and shouldn't be looked down on. I think bookish snobbery is such a problem because you should never, 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 never make anybody ashamed for what they are reading. I don't care if they're reading Fifty Shades of Grey and you think that it's awful. If they are enjoying it, if they are reading, if they are getting something out of it, then who cares? So in summary, in defence of romance and of romantic fiction, I think that if you are closing yourself off to a genre or to the potential of a genre in the future, just because you've had a bad experience with a few cliches, you're missing out. Obviously, you're entitled to read whatever you want. If you don't enjoy romance for whatever reason, then you don't enjoy romance, and that is completely and utterly fine. Similarly, if you're actively looking for books without romance in them, that is completely and utterly fine. What I'm talking about, and what I really dislike, is when people look down on representing romance and representing romantic love in fiction itself. I have always loved and will always love romance in books and romantic fiction and I'm not ashamed by that fact and I don't think anybody ever should feel ashamed of that fact. Love and romantic love has been a theme that is around for centuries and I think it's unbelievably exciting that authors are still finding new ways to bring it to us today. So yes, this was my first ever discussion-y based video. I'd really like to make some sort of series out of these, maybe like an in defense of series or just taking a literary topic and discussing them with you in the future because I enjoyed this one so much. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know down in the comments. And if you have anything to add to this debate, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and until next time, goodbye.